All right, in continuing our discussion of mixtures, we want to talk about concentration units. Now, you should be very familiar with a concentration unit for mixtures. Uh, that is the molarity, capital M, which stands for the molarity. It's defined as the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. I'll abbreviate solution, S-O-L-N. Um, we use this a lot in the laboratory. Uh, we use it a lot in general chemistry one. But here's the problem. You may have noticed in the last couple of chapters, we've been talking a lot about what happens if you raise the temperature or lower the temperature. And unfortunately, molarity is not constant uh, or independent of temperature. It is dependent on temperature. The reason for that is this denominator, the liters of solution, does not stay constant as you change the temperature. If I make a one molarity solution and I have one liter of it, one mole per one liter at room temperature at 25 degrees Celsius in the laboratory and I raise the temperature of that solution, I bring it up to 90 degrees Celsius or whatever, it will no longer be one liter of solution. It will be exactly the same number of moles of solute because I didn't remove any or add any, but my volume has now changed, which means my molarity has changed. So molarity, the numerical value for the molarity is dependent on temperature. So what we need is we need some temperature independent concentration units. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Temperature independent concentration units include percent by mass, you may already be familiar with this. Um, we talked about it in Chem 1 when we talked about percent composition of particular elements. It's very, very similar when I'm talking about a solution. The percent by mass is defined as the mass of solute per mass of solution times 100. We multiply by the 100 percent. Our units are percentages. Typically, our masses are in grams, which means we only have units of percent when we are finished. The mass of the solution in the denominator can be thought of as the mass of solute plus mass of solvent. Because of the law of conservation of matter, mass is conserved. So if I take a certain mass of my solute, add it to a certain mass of my solvent, those masses are completely additive and completely independent of temperature. So the percent by mass will not change if you change the temperature of the solution because mass is mass is mass. Mass doesn't change as you change the temperature. So there's one temperature independent concentration unit. Here's a second. A second is called molality. Notice it is just slightly different than our word molarity. It is molality. You should say it. Practice saying it because it's got some L's where you're not used to saying them. Molality. It is abbreviated with a lowercase m. Its definition is similar to molarity, but it's not the same. Molality is the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Since the moles of solute and the kilograms of solvent are independent of temperature, this is independent of temperature. Um, the unit for molality can either be written as a lowercase m, or you can write it as a moles per kilogram, understanding that it is moles of solute and kilogram of solvent. So there is another temperature independent concentration unit that we'll use. And then the last one that we'll talk about is mole fraction. We saw this in the gases chapter. The mole fraction is usually abbreviated with the symbol chi or a scripty X. The mole fraction of a particular solute or substance, you can talk about this in mixtures, whether you're worried about the mole fraction of the solute or the solvent or, or even if there's more than two things in there. But the mole fraction of whatever A is, again, typically the solute, is defined as the moles of substance A divided by the total moles. It is not times 100, and that would be a mole percentage if we multiplied it by 100. This is a mole fraction, and this value is unitless because it is moles divided by moles, so your moles cancel. Uh, it is a numerical value uh, less than 1. It's always positive, but it's going to be less than 1 because it is a fraction. Again, typically A is your solute, but it doesn't have to be. Now, you need to become familiar with converting between the various units. So let's set up a practice, a quick practice problem, but you're going to practice a lot more than this. In this example, what is the molality of an aqueous solution of HCl that is 31.0% HCl by mass? This might be uh, a unit conversion that you would have to do for a test or in the laboratory. Um, it is converting between the units of molality and the units of percent by mass. 
Even if it didn't say by mass, that would be the assumption unless you were told otherwise. The default for a percentage at this point in our lives is by mass. So I want to find molality, I'm given percentage, and I need to convert from one to the other. Uh, the steps for converting between any two of the units we were just talking about are essentially the same, although there are some nuances depending on what unit is given and which unit you're going to. So we're going to set it up for this particular problem. I'm always going to start the same way. I'm always going to start with a couple of columns on my paper. I'm going to start what is given or known, and what is given is 31.0% HCL. And I'm going to come over uh, a little bit on my paper or maybe down on my paper and I'm going to put what I want to find. All right, This is what I want to know and I want to find molality. Molality is a lowercase m. Then I'm going to fill in with the formula for both of these units. I either have them memorized or handy until I have them memorized. And I want to be as specific as possible as I can when I write these formula. For example, molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. But I know in this case that my solute is HCl and my solvent is water because it's an aqueous solution. And by the way, you will always assume that it's an aqueous solution even if you're not told that. So for my molality that I'm trying to find, this will be moles of HCl on top per kilogram of water on bottom. Over here, what is given is my percent by mass, and again, the formula is grams of solute over total grams of solution times 100. Let me write that as specifically as I can. This will be grams of HCl divided by grams of, I can either write this as grams of solution, or I can go ahead and split it up because I know that grams of solution is grams of HCl plus grams of water. Let me sneak this in sort of off to the side because we may need it. You may or may not need it, just depending on the problem. Don't forget that this is also times 100% for the formula. All right, so these are sort of the two sides of the problem. Here's what I'm given on the left. This is what I'm trying to find on the right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an assumption. You will always need to make an assumption when you are converting units. The assumption is what size of sample do you have. Now, it doesn't matter what size of sample you have. The concentration is the concentration is the concentration. It would be 31.0% HCl if I had a liter of it, if I had 10 milliliters of it, or if I had a gallon of it, or a room full of it. It doesn't matter. It's 31% HCl. So I always make an assumption to my sample size, and I make that assumption to make my math easy. Since it doesn't matter how big my sample is, I want to make my math easy. And in this particular given unit, my math will be easy if I assume that there are 100 grams of solution. Now, take a second and look at that. Do you see why that makes my math easy? If I assume 100 grams of solution in the denominator, the times 100 in this formula cancels with it. And that means, therefore, I have 31.0 grams of HCl. That's why assuming 100 grams of solution makes my math easy. Often we will assume one of the denominator. For example, if I'm given a molarity, if you just kind of look over here for a second, if I'm given a molarity, assuming one kilogram of water makes my math easy. So make an assumption based on your sample size to make your math easy. So 31.0 grams of HCl. And if we come back over here to molality, we now can find how many moles of HCl based on the fact that there are 31 grams. This is a grams to moles conversion, which of course you can do in your sleep. And this will allow me to find the numerator to find my molality. We'll come back to this and finish it up in just a second. Now that I know that there are 31.0 grams of HCl, let's see what else I can figure out from what's given. If I have 100 grams of solution, that 100 grams is grams of HCl plus grams of water. Therefore, I can calculate my grams of water. My grams of water will be 100 minus the 31.0, that is the grams of HCl. I took this equals 100 and solved for grams of water. I'm going to assume that I have exactly 100 grams, infinite number of sig figs, however many I need. So that would mean 69.0 grams of water. Now that I know how many grams of water, if we look back over here, now I can find my kilograms of water for my denominator. So how many kilograms of water? 
This is a grams to kilograms conversion. You might not even need to write this out, and that would be absolutely fine if you didn't. But if you do, recall that there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram, which means you have 0 .0690 kilograms for your denominator. Let's come back up here and finish this grams to moles conversion. To convert between grams and moles, I need grams of HCl on the bottom, moles of HCl on top. This is my molar mass in one mole. If I add up a hydrogen and chlorine, that's 36.46 grams of HCl. And then I plug it into my calculator. I don't want to round this value. I am in the middle of a calculation. I'm in the middle of a calculation, so I'm just going to leave it sitting here on my calculator. Let me get rid of the left-hand side so we've got some more room. All right, so now I'm ready to find, to calculate my molality. Now that I have my numerator and my denominator, molality is this value, which is still sitting here on my calculator, in moles divided by my kilograms of water. At this point, I do want to round to the appropriate number of sig figs, and it looks like I need three sig figs. So how about 12.3 little m for molality? And there I have converted from percent mass, which is given, to molality. And again, there are four concentration units that we talked about on the previous screen, and you need to be able to convert between any two of them. Practice.